There we go. Alright. Updated the title, because I always forget to do that. But we should be good to go now. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday, or Saturday, if that's where you are in the world. Or whenever, if you're watching this on YouTube. I'm going to be playing some more Legacy Death and Taxes today. Like I mentioned, I think I've mentioned it a couple times, I'm steering away from the modern content more right now. And kind of focusing on legacy because of these big events I have coming up. I'll focus in more on modern after I get past this 40 duels tournament in October and Eternal Weekend in November because then I'll have the RPTQ to look at in December. So, have a lot on my plate in terms of trying to prep for various events and stuff. So, I'm trying to kind of focus on legacy content as of right now. I'll still mess around with modern. I did so on Wednesdays and will probably continue to do so unless I'm really feeling like I want to play. Modern, but anyway, or I want to play Legacy. Anyway, there are a couple edits I wanted to make between last time I played this deck, which I guess was on Monday, because Tuesday I played Red White and Wednesday I played Black White in Modern. And I wanted to, I think, go back to Cataclysm. Over these Gideons. There's also a chance I want to go back to Bright Lake number two, rather than um, something in the board, but Miracles has definitely made its resurgence like I figured it would after the paper events in which like the the paper players are still going to play Miracles. They get to, to flex their muscles and stuff. It performed very well, <clears throat> so people are going to like jump back to it online like they always do people kind of like flip-flop online because it's a lot easier to do that in paper with these several thousand dollar decks that you have to be playing so there's a chance i want to play this brightling in the sideboard instead of something that's going on here there's a chance i could cut like the ether sworn i kind of i the ether sworn's kind of in my deck for safety still i'm playing the chalices instead is kind of the storm card but I feel comfortable with one on the sideboard but that's all i felt about container priest too what's up izzy so the, I guess there's a chance, like, that's supposed to be the cut. Like, put put in the second Brightling in the board. But there's also a chance that, like, the Cataclysm is just better than Gideon's against Miracles, and I don't need the to hedge for that matchup. A lot of options. Oh, so the, uh, yeah, the stupid Walking Ballista likes to hide back there, because it's, like, double X card. So Moto puts it in its own column. I think I'm going to try this. Ether's Run Cannon has been good. It has been good recently, but I'm trying to think of a lot of scenarios in which it's good and also Chalice is bad, and I can't think of a lot. I'm sure there are like plenty of cases, like against um, Allure and Chalice is going to be horrible, and Allure and our Food Chain Chalice is going to be bad, and Ether's Run Cannon is going to be good, but those decks are very much off to the wayside at this point. And so the primary primary matchup for Arthur's from Canonist is um, is Storm. And Chalice of the Void does Ethos from Canonist job, maybe even a little bit better at times, because it can come down on turn one. A lot of the Storm decks have moved from Ant to Tess, and Tess can go off on turn two a lot easier, or sometimes turn one. So having this only bit of interaction in your deck that you can actually play on turn one can be really relevant. Playing it on zero to turn off Chrome Mox, uh, LED, Lotus Petal. All that good stuff. Anyway, I think I kind of like jumping off with this as the 75. I'm still not sure like if I want the second Brightling or if I want a one of Ethersworn or stuff like that. I think the Cataclysm is a good the Cataclysms are a good call. I think I'm more scared of Grixis and Miracles than I am of Death Shadow. I'm going to update the deck list here. One right wing. All right, I think it's updated now. 14 cards on the sideboard. 
Why are there two Gideons and no Brightling? It didn't take like anything I did. <laughs> None of my edits worked. Except for deleting the Atherstorm Cannon Mist. Give me a moment. If you want to, Cataclysm, add one Brightling, add and zero Gideon. There we go. I think that works. Now the deck list should be updated. Maybe. Oh, so this is 14 cards. It's just not adding my Brightling. <laughs> it just really doesn't want me to play a Brightling in my sideboard. Apparently. I can also cut the Sword of War and Peace. That's actually kind of warranted. There's a chance that War and Peace just... I could, like, play one Ether Sworn instead of the Sword of War and Peace, but War and Peace has been relatively impressive for me. Well, so is Ether Sworn, so it's hard to tell. Again, very minor sideboarding decisions here, but I think we'll just start and I'll keep trying to to mess with that as we go. 1560, yeah, I should be good. Added. Apparently not. Apparently my sideboard is just forced to have 14 cards for the rest of eternity. I'll just run my match. Screw you. Screw you, sideboarding thing. Yeah, it lets me add a Gideon for some reason. Um. Yeah, sounds good. We have Vile, Mom, Thalia, Plow. Sam just has a bunch of gas. Miracles? Ooh. Caracas makes it even better if they're on Miracles. We protect our Thalia. Port would be nice. Nope. I kind of want to draw port so I don't have to play the Stalia on turn two. I don't think I will. I think I'm just going to play land pass, violent mom. I don't want my opponent to just be able to plow Thalia and untap or something like that. Oh, it's not even necessarily on miracles though, with like Volk, like Flooded Strand Volk. It could be on like Sneak or something and just haven't cast a cantrip or something. Just kept three land show until Emrakul cool, some nonsense, but. I think I'm just going to play Planes and Pass. No idea why Stream Decker isn't letting me add a Brightling to my deck. Ooh. Grixis? A bit casting here. Him? Nothing? I 
could like K command kill mom plus vile, but then we can play Thalia with Karakas back up when I don't feel that bad about it. Why Ballista and Chalice? Uh, so Ballista has been a card that people have been testing recently as kind of a hedge in a lot of the the Mother of Runes esque matchups. Basically, any deck where you want a pinger, it's actually like a really good option without going into red for like the red pingers. It's really good in the mirror, good against like Noble Hierarch decks like Maverick or something. And decent against the Delver decks, especially if they're like Grixis, Alt, and Young Pyromancers and stuff. It'd be very helpful. Alright. What are they on? Are they just on Grixis with a click? They click this mom, I don't really care. Do I plow this? No, I have Krakus. And Chalice is an alternative that I'm testing instead of Ethosworn Cannonist. It kind of fulfills the same role as the Storm Hate card, but can also be played on turn one, because a lot more people are playing Tess rather than Ant right now. And Tess just can kind of go off a lot faster and just play, kill you before you can play a Thalia or Ethosworn often. Those are the ideas behind them, at least. Also, the idea behind Chalice is that... Oh, they took the mom, sure. I don't care. I will plow this now, though. What? Might as well plow this. Uh, so Chalice has the option of also being reasonable in some of the fair matchups, like especially Miracles. Oh, we drew Rashad and Port. Got punished for not playing Caracas. Because now we can't port them here. Could run out the Revoker on, like, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Maybe that was right. Didn't really think about the fact that I'm taking this file up to three for Flicker Wisp. I'm just gonna port and pass. Well, yes, I want to play a card with file. <laughs> yeah, all of the one drops that are in my hand. Thanks, Moto. How nice of you to give me that option. Opponent playing two mana brainstorms is probably pretty fine here. It's really bugging me is why I won't it let me. A stream decker just refuses to let me put a brightling in my sideboard for some reason. They put their Volk. Take them off of red. Oh, maybe not. If they fetch for like Badlands or another Volk here. Yeah. Uh, now if they have double red, I'm going to port their undergrounds to take them off double black now. For like hymns or lilies or something like that. Although it would be pretty ecstatic if they played a lily on, like just tapped out for a lily on Blast Hope. Just flicker my Thalia. K command, destroy target artifact, and deal two damage to Thalia. So I can just pick up Thalia, flicker my vial if I want to save the vial. I think I do. I think it probably also lets me like cast the sword and equip it in the same turn with under the flicker wisp if I want to do that. So yeah, we're just. This also lets me take the vial back over to two. Alternatively, yeah, I could flicker the Thalia, but that doesn't let me play an equip sword. If that's what I wanted to do. So now unless they have, like, fetch land push, we can connect with the sword if we want. Aw, oh, man. Now to play around fetch land push. So do I want to slam the sword? Ugh. 
the worst draw. Alternatively, I could just attack for three and play. I could play Thalia to make them fetch. I think the better plan is just play Thalia for them. Porting is becoming more and more irrelevant, though, as they hit a bunch of mana. Force Pitch Counterspell. They're a very weird iteration of Grixis, like very blue heavy, I guess, with Vendillion Click and Counterspell. Um, so we get punished by, like, Snap K Command if I just run out the sword. I think we're just gonna play Second Vial, see if they want, if they, I can incentivize them to Snap K Command something else. If they slam Jace here, we're in a bit of a pinch. They'd also notably they had Force of Will, so... Slimmy slamming Sword of Fire and Ice would not have gone over that well. I wonder why they just fetched and didn't do anything. Are they going to K command me in my upkeep? That's why. Vendillion click me in my upkeep. Two Vendillion clicks? That mistake is really weird. Can't do anything about this one, but... I can just repeatedly put this click back in their hands, so it's never going to do anything to me. They have to take the Sword of Fire and Ice, basically. There's like no way in hell they're taking Phyrexian Revoker. Sanctum Prella, that's a pretty good draw. Do I put it on one or three? Tick up, tick up. Another plowing, just keep plowing their Vendillion clicks, I guess. I think I want to put it on one. It turns off cantrips and like fatal pushes that they haven't cast or any or bolts that they haven't cast. They've already cast one K command and they usually have two to three in these decks. So I think I want to actually plow this Vendillion click and then cast a Sanctum Prelate and put it on one. Not sure I'm gonna vial on this revoker. I don't want to get absolutely demolished by another K command. I think I'm just going to leave my hand with these vials ticking out. Well, that's a spell that I'm probably going to cast here. It's going to be real sad if they have actual force of will. They can just hard cast it, but I just need to play threats at this point. Yeah, it's just actual force of will. <laughs> kind of what I figured. I hope when they draw Jace at some point, it would have been Revoker. But they do know I have this Revoker in hand, so they're never going to tap out for Jace until after they answer the Revoker, or if they have a way to kill it in the same turn that they use the Jace. Honestly, I'm like pretty jazzed that my opponent is playing Vendillion Clicks instead of like casting Baleful Strixes. I mean, I guess I would have appreciated Gurmogs over Vanillion Clicks, because they did take two good cards from me. And if they were just slamming Gurmog Anglers instead, it would be much nicer. But these Vanillion Clicks have definitely not been the worst for me. Uh, Izzy underscore EXE, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. What is the opponent waiting for? Three K command, make me discard. All right. This is why we didn't want the revoker in play, so they can't just blow up both my things with the K command. They knew this card's a revoker, though, so why didn't they just shatter a vial for free? 
Jason. If I could spell the. This is also why I don't like Prelate in this matchup a lot, because sometimes you just. It's just a guessing game of what number you're supposed to choose, and sometimes you just get it wrong. Eh, well, I guess I didn't get it wrong, my opponent just had it all. But the fact that you can just play it on three and it dies, or play it on one and it still dies, is like kind of embarrassing. Play a 2-2. Two, two. They're running out of threats, and we can just pump up this Ballista every turn. <laughs> Fortunately, it's extremely susceptible to Snap K Command. Beat him up. Beat him up with a big old walking ballista. <laughs> eh? Corn didn't have anything last turn. Maybe they won't have anything this turn. They could always just, like, cast Forcible again. Or just Counterspell. But this still gives us the mana to pump this, so... Oh, no. JK. I want to use the other ability. And they are dead next turn if they don't find an answer to this. And now it's immune to Bolt. Nice, walking bulls to get there. Whew. So opponent's playing weird counter spell Vendillion click. So like blue blue heavy Grixis as opposed to like the traditional black heavy Grixis that's playing um stuff like him to Turok and Thoughtseize. My opponent might still have some of those cards in their deck, but I doubt they're on hit both him to Turok and counter spell. It seems kind of insane. But we are going to board in. I don't even know if I want recipes. No confirmation that they're on Gurmogs. I assume they're on Snaps, we just didn't see them. But if they're just on Snap and K Command, I don't know if Rest in Peace is worth it. For sure want these cards, at least. And we will cut... Revokers, Prelate... Plow... Two Plows? Something like that. I assume there are Baleful Strixes and stuff somewhere in their deck. I, we, I know they're on clicks, which they might board out, but they might keep in just because it like trades with a bunch of flying stuff. I have no idea. Opponent's playing the, the Grixis deck that I have a lot less experience against, so... Not 100% on some of my uh, sideboarding decisions here. But we took game one, which is really good. That Walking Blow still was very, very good at killing my opponent. And that sounds very good. Cataclysm is insane in this matchup, especially if they're hopefully not on Thought Seizes, and Aether Vile Recruiter just recruits an army of Wisps, especially in tandem with Cataclysm. We also have ports to keep them off of stuff early after we just go Vile Pass. Are they gonna Thought Seize me? Grimlock and Ponder? Yeah. Grimlock of Mass would have been kind of annoying. I'm going to try to not play the second Rashadden port if I can help it. To be able to use this second Rashadden port post Cataclysm to port their realistically one land. Oh, never mind. We'll just, just have a lot of uh, porting options here. Hopefully, my opponent doesn't Vendillion click away my Cataclysm. Slams a turn four Jace or something. Doesn't have Force of Will. With this hand, Vendelia Click is going to be extremely good against me. <laughs> Deal. The 
plan is probably just slam Cataclysm as soon as possible. Within reason. Float a red mana there? Sure. I'm not going to cast this recruiter. My opponent could counterspell it. Ooh, that is also a very good card, especially in conjunction with Cataclysm. <laughs> so the only bad thing that could happen here is losing this Aether Isle before I can slam this. Oops, yeah. Now I'm less soft to a click, at least, because I have three very good cards. It looks like they're either going to cast Click or K Command here, I think. Probably pretty reasonable to fire off a K okay, command on that. Which land am I discarding? It also means I need to play a threat that sticks before I want to Cataclysm them. Guess I'm just discarding another planes. Although ports are worse without a vial. I'm gonna discard a port. Ports get a lot worse without a vial because I need to actually like play my threats. Next turn we'll just slam Crusader, likely. Maybe not, maybe we'll play Recruiter. Oh, they missed a land drop, never mind. We're just going to slam this Thalia. I want to try to get through the Diabolic Edicts and or Bolts in my opponent's hand. Deal. If they whiff, I'll be sorely tempted to just cast Cataclysm as a double stone rain. Unfortunately, it would be like a quadruple stone rain for me, because I'd have to play it on five mana. Although if they whiff, then I guess I don't I can just wait for two turns, so it's not a great plan. A lot of my experience, these decks very rarely whiff when they're, like, desperately digging for lands with their brainstorms. Uh, Lewis CBR, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. Yeah, did not whiff. As per the norm. This Brightling might actually be pretty good here. Since we want to... My opponent has six cards in hand, so I don't really... Surprised I wasn't already following. Yeah, I, I definitely f forget to follow people sometimes, even if I watch them on a semi-regular basis. So the issue with like playing Crusader here is my opponent has six cards in hand, so they're very likely to have the the normal answers they'll have in Cru to Crusader with like Bolt or Diabolic Edicts and stuff. Diabolic Edict, obviously not great right now, but they can easily kill Thalia, Untap Edict, or something like that. So I want to try to exhaust them for more resources. And Brightling's really good here because they don't have a Strix or anything going on. It means I can't port, but... I think we're just gonna... Play Brightling. I guess if they counter... If they can't counterspell this, they'd have to force it. Yeah, now we'll just... Have a, a good chunk of threats in play. Bolt the Thalia, maybe, to push the Thalia? Yeah. Yeah, they can bolt Thalia, untap Edict or Crusader or something, but with Brightling, they have to have two removal spells, one of which isn't a bolt. They need, like, push into push, or, like, push into Edict or some such. Because we have the ability to make it a 2-4 with this colorless mana, so it's immune to a bolt. Hmm. 
because of Jace would be... Yeah, Jace isn't that annoying because we have this Cataclysm, but that does mean we kind of have to fire it off if my opponent bounces my Brightling here, which they will. Yeah. So if we draw a land here, I'll feel very good about casting Cataclysm. Otherwise, it's a little dicey. All right. So now we can cast Cataclysm, play Land Pass, and they're down to one land and nothing. We're down to two lands, and we just need to top deck a second land to unlock the rest of our hand. I really want to keep a port, but keeping double blue also or double white also seems very relevant here. I think I'm gonna keep the port though. Just porting them when they're on one land seems super relevant. I just want to kill this chase. I'll keep my land. Now hopefully we can find another source of mana before they do. I think I'm supposed to cast Recruiter here first. It does let them, it does let them like cast a Ponder or something, give them one turn to do it. But then after we Recruiter, we have A, a clock in play, even if it's not very good. We can go get, like, a Thalia, and then the turn after that we Wasteland plus play Thalia. Yeah, I'm gonna take one turn off to play this Recruiter. Um, yeah, Thalia seems like my best option. Just try to lock them out of this game. <laughs> that seems awfully mean. I'm supposed to attack first, because they could like fatal push this. Yeah. Oh well. Miss out on a damage there. But not that it particularly matters. Because now they just have nothing, and also we have another wasteland. <laughs> oh jeez, yeah, they're they're dead. Just play Crusader. They can't cast anything. Sick. Cataclysm does it again. Cataclysm is really, really good against Grixis. That was 14 games. There we go. That looks better. We're 50% win rate against Miracles now. Or not Miracles, Grixis. Alright. Now will Stream Decker let me put this Brightling in my sideboard now? I have no idea why it's just it just refuses to let me. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. Okay, Pokemon Brightling, add. Where do I DNT if you're talking about modern? I would love to watch that. Oh, uh, no, I was talking about more legacy content. I should maybe specify that. Although, I do own uh, modern red white DNT on Moto. I haven't played it in a while. I played it through like one league, and it wasn't really my thing, but I definitely never gave it its fair share of testing. I mostly was mad about a lot of how the games turned out. There was a game against Tron where we were on. We had a Resto in play in four lands and a Kiki in our hand, and we drew um, uh, Neil Spires, and it was infuriating. And we just died. And a lot of the games in that league worked out something like that. Anyway, 
Stream Decker cooperate. So it lets me add other cards. Like if I want to add a walking ballista to the sideboard. Oh no, it doesn't let me add that. But it lets me add a Gideon. Uh, why? <laughs> Connor tried the Militia Bugler version one. Yeah, I played that a couple times. That that deck was performing actually pretty pretty well. There were some tweaks that I was I was thinking about making before I kind of switched over to focusing more on legacy content for the time being. See, it's an, another gas hand. We have Vile into Port Mom into Thalia. Like this hand is just everything we want. The mirror. I guess it's not everything we want if we're in the mirror, but it's most things we want. It's always the only bad card in our hand. It's also really good because our opponent didn't have a one drop. Uh -huh. Our Thalia sucks. And they have a Stoneforge. Both of these are bad for me. But we have a mom. We just need to prevent them from getting an aerial threat. We have a mom and a brightling and a crusader, all things that can that can stonewall development on um on GTA connections. But if they have a flying creature, then we're kind of hosed. Thinking about activating stone fortune response here. We want recruiter, crusader, or one of our own. No, not crusader, recruiter. Revoker or one of our flying guys. Or like just plows. If they just have land here, then the activation doesn't matter. What the heck? Oh god, are they on like the Eldrazi version? <laughs> Outplayed. Now I'm exceptionally concerned about uh Yeah, because all my shit comes in tapped, too. Okay. I'm very concerned about just, like, GTA equip connect. They can't get through the mom, at least, this turn. I think I, I definitely have to cast a spell here. I think it's going to be Crusade. I love Heretic Thar. Heretic Thar is really good. I, m I miss being able to play it. It's still a fine tech option, but it kind of fell to the wayside when Recruiter and Prelate got printed. But I've always loved this card. Brightling might actually be better here. It's just a backup thing to prevent uh, GTA connection. Because next turn I'll, it'll untap and I'll have the white mana open to block and pick it up. Whereas Crusader actually lets them connect with the GTA still because this thing has first strike. Mom is line one of defense, but they can always have like plow plus attack. But yeah, I think we're just going to jam a tapped Brightling here. And stall from there. Also, if they tap their Caracas, I can actually put in this Thalia to, to block or something. If they just, like, play GTA, equip GTA. And an attack, then I can just eat it with the Thalia. I wonder if that's worth the upside. I guess the downside, though, is that I just get severely punished. If they have land plus plow, now they can just connect with the GTA, so maybe not. I guess, no, they I guess they can. So this is fine. This is also fine. Now they just need to attack. Come on, do it. Attack! Attack! Do it! Do it! Attack me! Oh man, they, they saw through my clever plan. They're never going to attack there. I could have literally anything, and they would get super punished. I could have a revoker, and I can still just block and mom it, so... That attack there would be really, really bad. I guess I can't actually block with the Thali, never mind. The attack was kind of free, but also doesn't do anything, because they just taps the mom. Take out this file. Ooh, we do Krakus. That's also very good. Next turn, at least, because this stupid thing has been tapped. I'd rather port them than play a second vial, I think. 
so we're just going to wait. Yeah, I'm going to attack with this Thalia. It's not going to block because they have their Caracas, so they can just easily make me pick it up. And if they block with the THC, then I can use the Mom and still have the Spriteling on defense and just free eat this. Yeah, so it's just like two damage here. So I never shot and port that. We have the mana to like block with Brightling. Yeah, they're on the the Eldrazi version. Is this a thought not seer? Yeah, it's fine. Put in this Crusader. You get an Aether Vial. Congrats, opponent. Now we can deal with this THC. We have the GT pre locks down. For now, at least. They still can't attack. Ooh, Wasteland is really nice. I wonder if I'm supposed to Wasteland the Temple or the Caracas here. It's tempting to Wasteland the Temple. The Caracas just stops my Thalia, so maybe it's actually the Temple that I'm supposed to Wasteland. What can I start attacking with? I could trade Crusader with Thought Knot if I wanted, which I think I'd be fine with. So let's attack with Crusader. Offer the trade there. Go from there. Yeah. I just take the damage. Oh yeah, this comes with tap dupes. I'm supposed to, I was supposed to bounce this then play the wasteland, but. I'm not even sure I want to bounce it yet. It's hard to remember all those shit that Heretic Athar does. Because <laughs> if I keep bouncing it, then they can keep replaying it and making and make my life more awkward. Rather, if I bounce it on their end step, then I have the control. Of oh, I can bounce it on their end step, and if they replay it, my progress will just be untapped again. They're just done? They're done with the whole game? Like, they're just dead? That seems like an early concession to me. Maybe they're conceding to, like, Port Plus Wasteland, and they're hand super mana hungry, but... Holy crap, did that concession seem early. Alright. Playing against Mono White Eldrazi and Taxes. Probably board similarly to as if it's Mono White Death and Taxes. I might want the extra Brightling. I'm not sure. I assume they're on Thought Knot and Reality Smasher, so Brightling is good at racing like Smashers and stuff, or just trading with them. You can pump up to a 5 1, give Life Link, and you gain one life total. And our removal spells are probably pretty taxed in this matchup, so. This is seven cards. We cut the Prelate and the Four Thalias, and then... I'm not sure what. Crusader is a little bit better here. They probably didn't even have removal on the main, like, Sword Splash shows, because they're usually a Chalice deck. With Sword Splash shows on the side for the matchup the Chalice is bad, like this one. But Crusader trades with Thought Knots, which I kind of like. It's also really good on defense with equipment, kind of like in the normal Drowsy matchup, but... Excited to play Boros or Nyan Standard. Yeah. I'm excited to see the, the tribes come back. Or tribes. The guilds. Because that's when I start. I actually started playing in Return to Ravnica era. So it's a, it's a very easy for the, like, the newer players to, to find a guild and identify with it, and kind of like that's their gateway into magic. I definitely kind of agree with that philosophy. Ravnica is one of their more well played out. Yeah, I'm not a big standard guy, but Ravnica's, yeah, Ravnica's also sweet. 
I'm not a big standard person myself. We're gonna cut like one Crusader, maybe two. I'm not sure if Brightland or Crusader is worse in this matchup. We'll run like that. I haven't played standard in a while. Besides that stupid team standard RPTQ. I hate the team standard is the only thing worse than playing a standard in my in my mind. Maybe Walking Blitz is actually not great in this matchup. I don't think they're on like Mother of Runes, because they're probably a chalice deck. They probably cut all their Thalias. And they don't have Flicker Wisps, probably. Yeah, maybe Walking Blast is actually the cut. Ugh. I will begrudgingly keep this on 6 on the draw. Bottom that, because I want more lands. We have, like, Plow plus Aether Vial. We're really soft to Wasteland and um, stuff that would, like, kill my Aether Vial here, but... Oh god, is this just like turn one stone for to turn two equip attack with GTA? <laughs> I'm gonna have to like leave up this Caracas just so I can plow the Stoneforge Mystic. That is a disaster. Hopefully we draw land. <laughs> Not what I meant. But yeah, we can't even play Vile here, because they just connect with GTA and murder me. There's a chance I could play Vile into like revoke the GTA into flicker with the counters off the GTA or something, but. Yeah, I'm gonna let my opponent spend their turn doing this at least. Oh, we draw a land that isn't another Caracas. Not even worth playing. We'll play it next turn if we don't hit a land, because we need to revoke this GTA, assuming they have another threat. Yeah, luckily they can't thought not both the revokers. It'd be nice to draw like a plow or a path. Or a land that isn't a third Caracas. But yeah, now we're kind of uh our hand has been forced here. Gotta name this GTA, or we just get absolutely demolished. The heck is that start? Yeah, uh, the mono white, the mono white Eldrazi version of this deck plays Mox Diamonds and like more lands than a normal D and T deck to just accelerate out the Eldrazi and stuff. Oh, they actually have the Plow too. Yeah, we're dead. And we have Revoker. We're not dead, dead. If they ever remove my second remover, then we're hosed. Wonder why they use the ancient tomb to equip. Alright. Well, I'm gonna have on this revoker here. Hopefully they don't have a second plow. Gita, cast this mother of runes. If they have another plow, I'll concede, but before then, we're not dead dead. We'll have Brightling to start fogging this Thought Knots here, or just racing it. Uh, fogging, it's looking like, because <laughs> this is going to be one tricked out Thought Knots here. They're not bad or small. Hmm. Punch me for more damage, sure. If we ever find a land, we might be in this game at some point. Our life is a little low, actually. They do have Batter Skull to regain life, but they'll stone walls from attacking, but not blocking, right? Because we can always block pickup. 
Yeah, they attack. Levi on the Spriteling. Oh wow, got punished by them boarding a Containment Priest against the Flicker Wisp deck, which seems like it's also not correct, but sure. Really good against my one lander with an Aether Vial. Playing the mono white versions of humans, but with less humans. Yeah, we omit the humans package for Stoneforge Mystic and for X Poker. Mono white humans, I call it. Interesting variation on the five color humans deck. I just have another thought, not yet, we're dead. That was a Moldesic that just definitely didn't work out. An opponent also had, like, the best possible on their starter. When they have the soul land for the turn one stone for turn two equip GTA, and you're forced to, like, not even play your Aether Vial, it can get really ugly. That was Soldier Stompy. It's inconsistent, like most Stompy decks. It's, like, vaguely inconsistent, like most Stompy decks. And I think it's mostly weaker than the other Stompy decks, Red Prison and Eldrazi, but it's it's a lot of fun to play, I'll give you give you that much. I've played it before, and it is a blast, but don't think it's, like, as competitive as other stompy options. Is anything else, like, bad in this matter? I think everything's fine. Yeah, Chalice and Spiritual Field are very sweet. Oh god, I might keep another, like, one-lander and get absolutely bodied by a another Containment Priest. Sandy isn't even, like, super good. The Stoneforge and the GTA are really bad unless I can find more lands. I think I'm gonna Mulligan this hand. God, this hand also sucks with this Batter Skull, but at least I have, I have land drops to make this time. I'm going to mulligan to six as well. Ooh, deal. I want that. Mom into port, into recruit something. Probably like a stoneforge to make this batter skull not garbage. Possibly recruiting something else if we need to try to answer something. Rude. I think I might want Mom plus Port, rather than just recruiting here. Don't even know what I'm recruiting for yet, so... So now we want to recruit something. Let's cast it and find out what. Hmm. I think it's just Stoneforge, honestly. If they T-cast me this following turn, we still have Wisp to Wisp the Recruiter for more stuff. So it's not horrible for me. I think I just want my equipment online versus like how slow my opponent's hand is going. They just didn't cast a two drop, which means they I don't know what's going on. They just have like a very clunky hand that we can try to capitalize on with equipment. The only really need answers is our couple of stuff. Because we have this active mom, which is extremely strong against like half of their deck. Like Soul Land Elk Smasher here. That's fine, we can beat us. Oh, so let's thought not, it's more annoying, which is what we were concerned with. But we have Wisp to Wisp the Recruiter. The only thing we're scared of after that is um, just like natural GTA. Yeah, I take 
the stone forge. Ooh, Crusader trades with Thought Knot. Though I don't think I'm concerned with trading with the Thought Knot just yet. Getting a flyer in play is probably more relevant. If four cards in hand. I'm like ungodly scared of them getting a getting a GJ here. Not modern, says Spider Space. Yeah, sorry, Spider Space. Got to prep for a bunch of modern Germans that are coming down the pipeline. Or not a bunch of modern, a bunch of legacy Germans that are coming down the pipeline. So I could, could get, like, a Revoker if I'm really scared of GTAs. I could also just grab another Wisp. I could also just grab Stoneforge. I think I might just want to get more Wisps here and try to put away the game like that. Although I should be, I should be playing around containment priest at my opponent's deck. We're just gonna grab another stone forge. Yeah, I'm a little Thraven spider. Yeah, I made a Thraven themed sub badges. Spider space. Wasteland me. That's fine. As long as they don't have GTA equip here. Okay, this is a smasher. Yeah, we can beat that rough, but we can beat it. We take, like, nine here. I have to... I'm gonna play Crusader next turn to block this Thought Knot. Maybe I don't. Maybe I play Stone Forge to get this Batter School going. Let's figure out. Could always chump block with the Recruiter. Ooh, never mind. Modern Event tomorrow, I have no clue what to play. I'm not really in love with taxes in the meta. Yeah! It's kinda... Eh. In Modern, it's... You can kind of play whatever and get away with it if you're good enough at your deck. So, play Tron. Tron is a good deck to just beat up people with, that's for sure. Why well, didn't Wisp to port their temple there? Uh, I Wisped my recruiter to go uh, tutor another thing. I didn't just like Wisp nothing for no value. Recruiter research just me another thing to do. Do I Council Judgment the Smasher? Chump Block Recruiter here? Play Crusader? Probably something like that. Maybe they'll vote for their Thought Knots here. I'll turn if I can double block the Thought Knot here. Which isn't the worst option. Considering I think my hand is better than my opponent's to a considerable degree. Is Stoneforge better than the tempo of them not having Smasher? I mean, they don't even guarantee to have the Smasher, and I do need something to do to put away this game. If I'm just if I just have a Flicker Wisp and a Recruiter in play, like I'm not gonna to win the long game. I want stuff. Like right now, I'm considering holding these back to trade with a Thought Knot because I'm pretty sure my hand can be is better than my opponent's. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm at a pretty low life total, so. Kind of punishes me for not double blocking last turn. I just took four for no reason when I don't attack, but. Ratchet Bomb, sure. We have a pretty diverse set of mana costs. Yep. Might even block with the Mom and the Wisp now. No, I want to diversify, like, threes and stuff. And I want to turn off their plows. Block like that. I need to draw a card here. Horrible draw, but... I want to play Stoneforge, even though it's, like, super inefficient mana-wise. Because I want to be able to activate the Stoneforge put in the Batter Skull before my opponent has Ratchet Bomb up. I can always just cast the Batter Skull with five lands. I don't know anything what I'm doing. I think I'm going to just Stoneforge play the GT here. Incentivize them to crack it on two because we have a lot of other not good. Uh, other good not two drops that I don't want them blowing up. 
Because if they take this up to three, most of my relevant cards are threes. And if we get, like, uh, Crusader plus Battle School games, just over. We also could get in a connection with the GTA next turn, if I want. But next turn we have the option of Crusader and Batter Skull or something like that. Yep. Or Crusader plus GTA. The, the GTA connection is just gain for life though, because my opponent is not playing a creature. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, I'm going to just Crusader plus plan on putting in Batter Skull now. This puts me one mana off of equipping the Batter Skull at some point, but I will be also fine with just a Crusader on Batter Skull in play, so. Thought not. Ooh, Batter Skull or Path to Exile? It's just Batter Skull, right? Yeah. Getting letting them take path is kind of obnoxious, but the Batter Skull also just beats this thought on a fight, so. Also if we draw land, the game I think basically immediately ends. So it's a bummer they take this path, but they have to crack this ratchet bomb on two. Because this GTA also just puts them in the ground. Burn eight whack and four of taxes. I haven't found a version you like yet. Yeah, never been super in love with the concept. I don't like. Never understood what the red really brings to the table. Land. Oh, well, that's that's also a good draw. I will accept this as a as a top tech. I'm not gonna play it yet. I'll offer trades. We still have germ to block the thought not on the back foot here, so. If they want to trade with Crusader, sure. They're still going to die to Batter Skull and Stone Forge here. Cast out. Alright. Cast out my Crusader, I guess. Wait, no, that doesn't do anything. They have to cast out the Batter Skull. Now I just pick it up. Or do I? Do I even care? It takes so long for me to get this Batter Skull back into play. Yeah, Kiki Rusto is so slow, and Kiki is super clunky in the deck. Could just let the germ die and plan on Stoneforge suiting up Crusader? Rather than picking it up. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just gonna let it happen. Stone Legacy. Yeah, this deck plays like weird, really weird stuff because it's a mono white deck with a bunch of soul lands. Like you play Cast Out in Soldier Stompy as well. Because you can cycle it if it's garbage. Just grab Sword of Fire Knight so we can draw cards. Need to dodge like Stone Forge or Gite in like this exact turn. Yeah, sure, attack me. Deal. Feels like a second cast out, that's kind of annoying, but... They're just going to, like, take a million damage here, if they don't have another cast out. Vaguely concerned about like Blessed Alliance or something, but another cast out. Yeah. Sure. 
still not dead. We go to four, but we have a lot of chump blockers with between Stoneforge Mystics. We are pretty dead if they find a Smasher now, too. But double cast out is pretty backbreaking. Control damage, draw two cards. <laughs> yeah, they were dead if that connected. I think the only reason they don't attack is be or they do attack is because they have an answer for it. Another Ratchet Bomb, sure. I might actually chump block this mom now. No, I want to incentivize them on cracking it on a, like a different number. Maybe I will actually. We have one card in hand. Yeah, we're gonna block. Oh no, crap! Need to. Oh, hello, cat. I need to do this first. Oh god, those are claws. Give Mirror Zero Pro White for fun. Even though it doesn't matter. If their last card is plowed, they just cast it in response to the mom tap anyway. Or on my turn. Those decisions certainly don't matter. Wasteland doesn't do anything here if they have infinity mana. I'm not sure if I want to attack with the Crusader here. Because the answer is yes, because it puts them in lethal range next turn. I have two stone forges to block, and they can't pop the Ratchet Bomb on two yet. Yeah, this just makes them dead next turn to the sword, so... What do they have here? Containment Priest. And quality magic card. Glad they brought that in. We draw Flicker Whisper, just ultimate punish. <laughs> Flicker their Thought Knot, draw a card, kill it. But if they attack with Thought Knot and they don't have an answer, they just die. This Crusader attacks for 8 minimum if they can empty their hand. And it can't be blocked by Containment Priest because War and Peace is pro white. Use Hallow Moonlight. It's like a little bit inefficient mana wise. In term and like in, it's inefficient and narrow in what it does, kind of. Like what what matchups would you want it against that you don't want something like Rest in Peace or something? My opponent says that was a really cool game of magic. GG's. GG's indeed opponent. It was very that was like very close for a while there. I thought I thought I was like very favored, but it turned out like with double cast out and stuff that, that matchup got a lot closer to me dying. Than I was that was than I was comfortable with, but we got there. Add some mono white. I guess it's basically mono white Eldrazi taxes. We won game one, lost game two, won game three. Like it's so Hallow Moonlight in modern, I guess, is a card that has a one time effect that's basically like what a graph digger's gauge for one turn, right? You could prevent you could do most of what you want with Hallow Moonlight with other cards. That are that are that have more lasting impact. And you don't have to hold up two mana forever. You can just like slam a rest in peace or slam a graph digger's cage or slam a something that prevents people from getting cards out of their decks. Besides Grab Digger's Cage, I don't know if that card is exists. Play a Leon and Arbiter. <sighs> Alright. Round three. Let us beat up some more people, hopefully. Well, we're not beating people up with this hand. This hand for sure sucks. God. 
What happens to keep this on on six? Probably not. My opponent keeps a seven. This hand is just this crusader is just uncastable. This Thalia is close. We have a ballista and some wastelands. But I'm mulligan to six, so I feel better about mulligan to five when my opponent's on six. So okay, this hand's much, much, much better. I don't want second Thalia though, especially not with Caracas. He wastelands some sideboard cards to finish taxes online. Real life, I need to rebuy all the lands. Is Krakus 95 again? Jeez. I mean, I guess whatever Master said it came out in was a long time ago. But the price plummeted when it got reprinted, which was super nice. But I have not paid attention to that price at all. Cavern. What are we playing against? No, we're playing against, we're playing against five color humans? Or we're playing against. Uh, we. Oh no, I didn't want to have six. Shit. <laughs> I guess we're wastelanding this now. I was gonna... I realized that I shouldn't be f6 things. my opponent's casting a creature and I wanted to plow it and then untap and play Thalia, but I think the better line now is plow plus wasteland them. It also could be death and taxes. I don't know. But I've been thinking about five color humans a lot since I started talking to those people that were trying to brew that deck. How did they mulligan? How did they mulligan? They put one at the top, so. Court is 16 on T3D. Is it really? Still technically could be five color humans. But also could be Eldrazi or be Death and Texas. I don't know. I should like check the face. Oh yeah, there are the five color humans deck. Cool. Haha, -ha, we have this Caracas for the Thalia. I wonder if they're in the in the group chat. They have a Krogus too, that's mean. And they can just keep replaying their Thalia to grow their lieutenant. That's super rude. Take that up. Ooh, mom's good. I'll keep playing Thalia. Wasteland my Caracas. Oh, what is this? Imperial Recruiter. Sure, go find like a Orza Pontiff. We're probably pretty buried here unless we can find Stoneforge Mystic or something. What's up, Yosias? Oh, yeah, I just mentioned it in the group chat. We are 100% playing against five color humans. People are in for this deck, apparently. What they tutor? Palace Jailer. Mm. It's not very useful against this Mother of Runes, but. It's pretty useful against, like, me not having anything helpful. We draw, like, a Wasteland or a Port for this Caracas. We actually might be able to... Oh, fuck. <laughs> Actual worst draws. If they tap out for the Palace Jailer for some ungodly reason, we can take the Monarch back. If they go like fifth land, palace jailer, attack, leave up Caracas, then we're just super super dead, because we can't get through it. 
Um, but they could also just like not windmill slam the palace jailer here. They could just like play out the Thalia or something. Wait until more opportune time. Yeah. Oh, that's mean. Play their own Thalia, sure. Make a gigantic lieutenant, sure. Alright. It's a thing, I guess. Yo, so, yo, soy easy. Oh, wow, I've been fucking up your, your name real bad. Yo, soy easy. Oh, I, I see it now. My, my B. Yo, soy easy. I think we're pretty dead here, unless we can find, like, Recruiter for stuff. Recruiter for a bunch of Flicker Wisps. Hold down the floor or something like that. The opponent could honestly just start Mother of Rinsing in their Thalia, and just beating me to death. I'm just gonna block, pick up my Thalia. They have Caracas, so I don't really care. This Thalia means nothing to me. Keep his mother runes on the board. Because if they palace jailer me, I can just. I guess that block was incentivized, so now they can just play the palace jailers, and I can't get through it, because I can't file in my Thalia. I actually thought of leaving this file on two for an instance like this. But then we just like play the game of we both take the monarchy back from each other. And my opponent's very favorite because they just have this huge board state. That is the ugliest fucking monarch token, holy shit. I guess I couldn't even get through this, though, because they have Recruiter and, Ma and like, white creatures, so I couldn't even actually punch through, so. And I'll tap their Caracas. They bounce my Thalia, I can put it back in, they can waste on my Caracas. Life's not going very great. I suppose I could, like, pro away my Thalia. Oh, that doesn't even work. If I pro away my Thalia and attack, the Recruiter doesn't even care. Because we're here to just eat it because they have, they have a mom too. I think we're just super, super dead. I wonder if this is a Cataclysm matchup. Just like, as a, as a Wrath. It just kills a bunch of what your opponent has in play. Name like, Sword Supply Shares? Nothing else in my deck is going to get cast at this point. I have two vials. Yeah. They should probably start using Mom proactively. Just pro, yeah, pro white there. Thought he was lieutenant and just punch me to death. It does actually let me, like, steal the monarchy if I want. Not that that really helps, but... Because now all their creatures are white, I can attack with Thalia, but then they can easily... Uh, take back the monarchy. I have nothing to block, I'm at 12 life, I'm probably just dead. Could stone for... Aw. I'll almost get a GTA online. Not that that would do anything. Oh yeah, they still have the recruiter. Yeah, wasn't thinking. Could kill the recruiter by like pro, 
for red attacking. If they didn't wasteland me, I could actually have uh, gotten GTA online here. Like, file and stone forward, play GTA, equip GTA, attack. Don't think I'm not even sure that, like that would be enough to get me out of this this mess though. I guess no, I couldn't because they have Athalia too. I forgot about that to be perfectly honest. I'm not dead yet, so might as well. I was supposed to be putting the Thalia back in, but whatever. Oh, it costs four? Jesus. Hang on. Might as well bounce this and then cast. It does pump up the Thalia's. We're, we're just dead. I don't think any of my decisions really matter here. I'm just kind of playing the game to, to, to its inevitable conclusion. Opponent might want to like stop proactively momming though if they're scared of this GTA for some reason, but I sincerely doubt it. They just crack me for eight, yeah, and then I just die. I'm sure. Just gonna like bury me with this monarch instead. Sure, I suppose. So me attacking does nothing here until I find something to to force the issue on their mother of roods. Well, I'm honestly surprised they didn't just try to like put this game away though. I'm at four life. I don't think I could ever win if they just crack me for eight. Although, the way they're just drawing cards, they could just wait until they get Thalia's attention up to a 12 12 and kill me with it. Noble Hierarch is 10, Thalia's 11. It's close. It might be a be lethal if they just like turn everything sideways. Oh, all right, yep, all right. Pack it in. Maybe this is a cataclysm matchup. We'll see what's in my sideboard that's like actually ready for this matchup. Pro white, pro red seems pretty decent. Paths, councils, judgments, brightling. Pearl of Orza, maybe it like only hits file. But sometimes it's it's I'm used to like the the modern sideboarding. I'm just like, oh, I have eight cards to go because I have four or Leon and Arbiter's four Thalias. But now I just have like the Thalias and the Prelate as really bad cards. So I bring in this pile. Cut 100% Academy. Yeah, Academy just as a board wipe, which is weird because there are not a lot of matchups where you actually bring in Cataclysm to wrath your opponent. Um, Recruiter's probably slow, and I don't really have a lot of bullets for it. Like, you can recruit Brightling, or not recruit Brightling, you can recruit Wisp Chain to try and uh, put your opponent into the ground, but this is, seems more like you need to take a control stance of just kill a bunch of your opponent's threats, and Recruiter's just very, very slow in that regard. I think I want Revoker. Revoker answering Mom is pretty important, as well as you can name File. What do I cut, though? A wisp, maybe? Something like this looks okay. Yeah, I don't hate that. I'm gonna add a five color human section to my uh, side, or to my matchup data. Would like to play first. Wow, this hand is like kind of garbage, but also kind of 
decent. We have a lot of like good cards. Brightling's good in this matchup, but Brightling's also incredibly mana hungry. And this hand is also just very mana hungry. If I'm like firing off proactive wastelands and stuff, I think I can do better. This hand is like debatably better. Battlefield sucks, but land file, plow, scry. Keep this. Scry land to the top. Hopefully sit here for a little bit. Cast Council Judgment on stuff, cast Cataclysm on stuff. Go from there. We should need to like, keep top decking lands, but also we want to draw creatures, so this hand is super clunky. We want to get up to four lands for Council Judgment and Cataclysm, but we also want to play things so we can have a threat in play after we Cataclysm. Meddling Mage, sure. Probably just snap name Source of Plowshares. Yeah. We're going to cast this Council's Judgment. I'm not sure if I vote for this Vile. I don't think so. If they have Mom, it's really punishing if I don't vote for this Vile. If our plan is like cast Cataclysm, though, then I don't really care about the Mom. I just kind of want to like I can activate the Swords. Like turn on the Swords, I mean not activate, obviously. Although, if they have Mom and I vote for this file, they can play Mom next turn, and I still don't have an answer to it, so yeah, we're gonna vote Meddling Mage. Get off my island. Just Hierarch deal. I think I am gonna like vile check them here at, or at certain points. I want them. I want to see if they have brought in contained priest and like want to flash it in or anything. I'm usually not a big fan of of vile checking my opponents, but if they like leave a mana or leave this vile on two, I'll see if they activate in response. And also, like, they could be responding to Revoker on this vial to name their vial or something like that. That's fine. Does that attack, like, a trying to bait me to activate this vial? No. Alright. What was that attack about, then? If I just had, like, anything, doesn't that thing just die? Fuck. It was, like, the worst possible land to draw. Because it doesn't matter that much if I end up casting this Cataclysm, but we just have to like sit here awkwardly for a little bit. Sure. Another Meddling Mage. I don't really care what this is. Yeah, Lieutenant. That's fine. We're just going to try to fire off this Cataclysm as soon as my opponent has like a low hand size, and we can get... Do we can kill a bunch of creatures? Hopefully, like... If we can hold on to this plow so we can cataclysm into like clean up with the source of plowshares. What the heck is this? Manic Vandal? That would make sense. We have nothing to put in, so. Let's see if they want to contain my priest me. I still have nothing. I want them to cast, like, one more creature. Hopefully not Palace Jailer. That'd be actually super obnoxious. Ah, oh, fuck. Now that you could like, draw two cards every turn. At least we get to Wrath them and hopefully find a thing. Though we can't really find a thing, because now we're down to one land, too, and they're just, like, draw out of the Wrath a lot easier than I am. 
and they have their Aether Vial, and I don't. So I think we're just super, super dead. This hand just didn't pan out very well. Um, we're going to play the second Caracas, because I lose these lands anyway. So, float white. Keep basic planes. If they're on wastelands, then I'm concerned. <laughs> this human's a bad matchup in all formats. Yes, I imagine so. I imagine less so in in Legacy, just because you do have access to Stoneforge and stuff, but I've had a couple, like, real clunker, clunker mold of sixes here. Like, this hand was definitely by no means a good hand to beat humans with. I imagine it's a lot more winnable for Death and Taxes, but I definitely would not air it on the side of good. Unfortunately, my opponent has both the Vile and the Monarchy, so... <laughs> their uh, their post-Cataclysm setup is probably way better than mine. I feel like Meddling Mage named Plow here. I'm just I'm done. I'm out of this. I'm out of this game. I'm going home. We need to draw, like, something to take the monarchy back really quickly. Not back. Take it from them. I don't even know if there's a three I'm supposed to play around by casting this plow right now, but whatever. <laughs> Devout chaplain, huh? Yeah, we're gonna plow that. I'm playing a little soon. I probably I think I might give it a test drive on Tuesday. You so easy. <clears throat> Tuesday's usually my like weird off the wall, like whatever I want to be playing that whatever I'm going to be playing that day. What, whereas Monday is usually mo mono-white taxes and legacy, and Wednesday is usually black-white ultrazy taxes. Oh yeah, we're super dead. We are incredibly dead. Ha, ah, take that. We have a Mirren Crusader. How is my opponent ever going to beat this? If they reflect image this, I'm also packing up my stuff and going home. Alright, yeah, we're dead. <laughs> Might actually just be dead on board. Three, four, five, six, seven, or close. But yeah. Close enough that yeah, my opponent's just gonna like crush my soul here. Uh, two games, lost O2, lost games one and two. Yeah, it definitely doesn't feel like a good matchup, but we also just drew very clunky, so not a not a super excellent testament to how good or bad that matchup is. But I think just based on how it felt there. Whoops. I think this is wrong. Oh whoops, there we go. That should be the right data. Thirty-six losses, seventy-nine wins. So like a really good win rate overall. 68.7 over 115 matches thus far. Normally on the human side, if you can avoid them getting... Yeah, exactly. That, this, that match was all about Stoneforge Mystic, and we never... Well, we drew a Stoneforge Mystic on like turn 900, game one, but... Yeah, most of your deck isn't super important. Rather, you just want to draw, like, removal spells and Stoneforge Mystics. And opponent had, like, a lot of anti-Stoneblade uh, deck hate. They had Manic Vandal and the Devout Chaplain thing. Devout Chaplain seems really nuts against Death and Taxes. I don't like it mu much against, like, some of the other Stoneblade variants, because it relies on, like, you already having a snowballing board to have a repeatable uh, edict. Or not edict, but repeatable disenchant for their stuff. 
But I guess, like, specifically Death and Taxes, and maybe Maverick, the more removal light decks, where, like, the board state just can get really clogged and stuff. Chaplain seems pretty insane. But it's, like, blue white stone blade and stuff. I feel like it's kind of not great. Yeah, it's very magical, Chris. Like, when it's good, it's obviously just nuts, and your opponent's never gonna beat it ever, but I, there are probably a lot of cases where it's just, a, like, a miserable 2-2. Because your opponent's not going to let you snowball. Because if you're snowballing, you're already winning. Waiting for the next round. We're 2 1 right now. What did we beat today? Beat Mono White, Eldrazi, Taxes, and Grixis Control. So not bad. That's why I played it as before. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, you were testing before the bans. I didn't know this deck existed before the bans. Also, before the bans, you probably have bigger concerns than Stoneblade decks. Because Stoneblade was really bad. Like, Stoneforge decks were really bad before the bans, because... The best decks were K-Command. Cliffy81 is our opponent. Man, this hand's really good if my opponent's on a fair deck. A fair deck that isn't Grixis. This hand's like really medium if they're on anything else. This Battle Skull sucks. The rest of this hand is exceptionally medium. Mm, I'm gonna keep it. We're on the draw. Having, like, Double Plow to keep up stuff on the draw can be good. If they're on, like, Miracles or something, we're just super boned. Could be Miracles. Could be a lot of things. Honestly, it could be, like, any variation of combo decks. I meant it was actually better for it. I, hmm, I, I guess I don't doubt that, since Grixis controls probably about as bad as a uh, check pile was for you because you weren't like you didn't really care that much about cake mans or greedy mana bases like celebrate i guess having like trinity nemesis is nemesis might be rough but the resurgence of stone blade post ban like the resurgence of stone forge decks being a lot better is probably rough because gt is probably a hard one of the harder cards for you to beat what are we getting killed by grixis looks like grixis maybe it's storm Still could be either. Which is kind of annoying, because I want to play this Revoker, but... I imagine it's Grixis! I guess uh, if they take my Crusader, then they're Grixis. If they take the Revoker, then they're Storm, but if they take the Revoker, yeah, I can't do anything about it if they take the Revoker. Besides draw Thalia! Ha! Huh. Huh. Ha! Come on, let me go to my draw stat. I want to dramatically draw this Thalia. One day, maybe. But, yeah, I feel like there's, like, not a world where Grix is going to thaw my Phyrexian Revoker, like the, the Colgon's Command deck. Versus, like, this Mirror Crusader, which is sometimes very unbeatable for the deck if they don't find their Lightning Bolts and stuff. Ooh. I guess we just play Stoneforge. Better than just playing a Ballista against either deck my opponent might be on. Makes our Batter Skull better. We're gonna grab Sword of Fire and Ice. If they're on Storm, if they're on, like, Tess and they empty me, then they have to beat a Batter Skull. If they're on Ant, they can just kill me. Also, if they're on Test, they can also just kill me. They just make, like, 20 Goblins, or just Burning Wish Tendrils. But whatever my options are, it's much better than... Like, so unfortunately for anything, it's way better than just playing a Ballista on one there against any iteration of whatever my opponent's deck is. Yep, Storm of some sort. Yep, Ant, so we're probably dead. Adnaz? 
at Nas with like three mana up. Oh, fuck. Oh jeez. Are they gonna like just natural kill me? Like they're not even gonna like oh they're gonna just like past in flames here, Oh Jesus, they have the actual just we're super dead. They're just they can just infernal tutor for infernal tutor for tendrils to kill me. They have seven mana. They're also passing a flame? Yeah, we're, we're dead. Alright, well, we tried. Mm. Could have definitely kept. We did kept keep ahead knowing, well, we're probably hosed if they're playing combo. But playing with Drowsy Stompy in my first Legacy tournament at our local store, the people probably won't have the best in slot cards for all the cards in the deck. Should I change my sideboard? Um, What does your deck look like? Can you post a link or something? I could take a look. And is it just like a bunch of people playing like what do you mean probably won't have like the best in slot cards for all the cards in their deck like they're they're like not traditionally legacy players and they're a little more modern players slowly trying to port their port different iterations over to legacy or what anyway while we're doing that i will also sideboard Two city trader city you play two city and one crystal thing. Okay. Um, and so you're talking about sideboard decisions. Caracas, two ratchet bomb, three thorn, two tumble magnet. What on earth is the tumble magnet for? I guess sneak, sneak and show. Tap down their emeralds and stuff. Karn, Leyland the Wood, all the dust. Seems like pretty stock. I don't know what you would change. Depends on what like what you're legitimately concerned about playing against, right? If people are, like, playing modern decks that are ported to Legacy, and, like, that's what they're doing, then maybe you change the sideboard and you want more, like, fair deck cards, like Dismembers or something. How many Dismembers are there in the main? Two? Like, I don't know. Some Ratchet Bombs in here? Oh, there are already Ratchet Bombs, too. I'm concerned. Oh, playing versus Burn? Oh, uh, well... Yeah, if they have, if they're just like burn for it with price of progress, that's pretty rough. That's not a very good matchup. You want chalices real hard. Um, give me one second. I need to finish sideboarding. Brailing sucks. Liquor wisp sucks. There's usually something that sucks more. Oh, GT, GT is bad. And another flicker wisp sucks. Yeah, this looks fine. Um, so, like, if you wanted to burn tech, there's probably something out there that exists. But, like, the burn versus Eldrazi matchup is actually kind of silly. Because sometimes it's really good for Eldrazi, because you can, like, chalice on one into Thought Not Seer and stuff, and you just absolutely demolish them. But sometimes they just, like, cast Price of Progress, and you take a million damage. Just gonna have to keep this hand. Oh, I was supposed to cut this Ballista. This Ballista sucks. Be much better as a Flicker Wisp in this hand, but... We're also going to lead on Mom, notably, at this point. Rather than leading on Aether Vial, we want to be able to protect a turn to Thalia from a bounce spell, letting them go off. Which is the reason we don't play Aether, we don't play Aether Vial on one. Anyway, um, Burn Tech. You play, like, Zurin Orb, right? How much life does that game when you sack a land? Like, two life? Something like that? Price of Progress, you for six. Out. Yeah, exactly. Price of Progress is a real bummer. Um, most Storm decks aren't playing Massacre anymore. I get really punished if they are, but I want double mom up so they can't, like, end step, try to bounce, untap, bounce, kill me, or something like that. So I think getting, like, extra moms online is, can be relevant as well. Just, like, play out my whole hand to get, get massacred into oblivion here, but can't really afford to play around it. We just need to protect our one hate card. But yeah, Chalice and Thought Not are your, are your 
the best friends in this matchup for sure. Two minute brainstorm deal. Um, what else can you do? Gta is also very relevant, but you already have Gta's. Gta getting a bunch of life is very good. They're gonna bring in like shatter effects and prize of progress, so sometimes Chalice of Two is actually super relevant. Although I'm playing Dread of Night right now. I haven't seen that tech pick up, but it's mostly been like fatal pushes and bounce spells and abrupt decays from what I've seen, but I haven't paid attention to lists in a while. I usually kind of like look at whatever Caleb Schur tweets. Hexproof me, maybe? Oh, you can play like uh, whatever that. There's that uh, four mana thing, right? Witchbane Orb. Attacking with a mom here because they can't cast a spell on the spell yet this turn. So if they untap and cast a spell on it, it costs it like at least two mana, and then cast another spell on it, which costs two mana. So good for to get in the one extra damage. And you always kind of want to try to pick up your extra points of damage where it, where it counts in the storm matchup. Yeah, which be an orb. That could be a thing. Price of progress, I don't think targets, and neither does Sulfuric Vortex, if I recall correctly. They're not really on Flame Rifts anymore, but still very. It could be very useful. I think Zurin Orb might be fine. Like, after you get like a Thought Not in a Smasher in play, you can just basically sack all your lands, make you mean the price of progress, and gain a bunch of life. I forget the exact text on that card, though. Maybe it sucks. Like another sword, like a life gain sword, sort of light and shadow, or just more. I think more GT is probably just better than that, though. Light and shadow, or war and peace. War and peace is probably relevant per red. Please don't. Hmm. Let's see what they're tutoring for. Another Cabal Ritual. They're just gonna try to play through this Thalia. Basil. Yeah, Basil's color is a good option. That's a, that's a, yeah, that's definitely a good a good idea. So I can attack them for 6, 7, put them to 6. Attacking them with Mom puts them to 5. But that doesn't really matter, because I can also ping them to 4. So attacking with the second Mom here doesn't particularly matter. So I'll just leave up double Mom for maximum hopeful not dying, because I don't think my opponent's going to go for Adnaz at this point. <laughs> they have to go for a deterministic kill through Athalia. They're literally supposed to play a vial, but it shouldn't matter. They're either dead this turn, or they're, or they're gonna kill me this turn, or they're dead the next turn. Or they find, like, Thread of Night, and then we're up Shit Creek anyway. Yeah, opponent's gonna try to play through a Thalia, which they can do. I've definitely seen Storm, like, be a Thalia in the past. Oh, it's not even on Threshold yet, though. Oh, so this second Cabal Ritual gets Threshold, because they can fetch Crack Lotus Petal. Don't know if it does enough, still. No, you don't want to cast the Tutor. Okay, you want to crack that first, sure. Yeah, then Cabal Ritual. Past in Flames? They just, like, have Past in Flames? Is this lethal? I think Passive Flames kills me here. Definitely have not done the math on it, but it puts them to 10 cards in the graveyard, so they can just like flashback Cabal Rit, flashback Cabal Rit. Cabal Rits make 2 mana each. Passive Flame costs 5, they have. Oh, jeez. They have LED. We're definitely dead. Can they Infernal Tutor for Passive Flames here? Probably, maybe? Yeah, that's what they're doing, it looks like. Crack the LED. They have six, seven, eight mana. Passive Flames costs five, puts them to three. Cabal Ritual puts them to five. Cabal Ritual puts them to seven. Cabal R or Dark Ritual puts them to eight. Yeah, I think we're dead. Because, yeah, it puts them to eight. And eight is exactly flashback infernal tutor. Uh, 
go get tendrils kill you. Wow. That's rough. I wonder if I actually might have won if I'd played Crusader instead of like the turn I played Mother Runes plus Ballista. What are they infernal tutoring for? Doesn't that cost three? They go get more Cabal Rituals, it doesn't do anything. It actually like net loses them a mana. What's happening? Clovey's on the front runners of the strong community, very good at this deck, yeah. It's definitely like it's it definitely like is pretty tough to play through a uh, Athalia. I guess they get an infernal tutor just for like a, a masker here if they have one. Oh yeah, I don't know, they just get tendrils to I'm an idiot. I'm already dead. Getcha. I tried. Yeah. Play through Thalia is definitely hard, but doable. Or needed like a lot of good cards here, but like tutoring for the second like the Cabal Rituals are very important to play through it because they can actually like net you serious sums of mana. I wonder, I need to like go back and like look at that match to see if the math works out that playing the Crusader there actually gets me the lethal a turn earlier. I wasn't really factoring that in, I was factoring like, I think making sure that the Thalia stayed in play rather than maybe winning the game a turn faster is definitely an important thing to consider. But there's also a chance that like, oh, mom plus Thalia is probably fine on this turn, I can just play the Crusader. But I'm not even sure that kills them a turn faster. I'm gonna go back and like look at that math. Where's Ant? Here's Ant. So should I be playing black or mono white or red white after this? I think I want to run back another mono white league, but. Red White has been performing pretty well. I've I played it twice and I four four one with it. I four one with it once online and then I played another league offline and I four one again. Red White has felt pretty strong, but I'm not sure which one I want to. Want. <clears throat> I definitely wouldn't want to play test Red White a lot more before I commit to like oh that's the deck I'm gonna play, especially because I'm just more partial to Mono White. But Pia. And Kiran was really, really good when I was playing against Grixis and Miracles and stuff. Peter and Kiran Lara was nuts, but Cataclysm it might just be worth it enough. Hmm. Man, these hands suck. This hands like borderline good enough. On the play, Mother Friends into like other cards is pretty relevant. Let's throw just on comboed again, in which case we just get railed. I think we have like enough castable spells so that this hand is is reasonable. What the fuck am I playing against? Cloudpost? Does Cloudpost Cloudpost plays ancient stirrings, right? And would play main deck pithing yield because they're so weak to wasteland? the only thing I can think of, just like mono green or blue green cloud post. In which case I might just want to port them this turn. Like I don't think uh uh like depth turbo depths isn't gonna play ancient turns and also they play snow covered because they play into the north and occasionally you actually want like a land. Whatever they're doing, I'm pretty sure I want to be activating Rashad and Port. I don't think they're doing anything where, like, I need to leave this mother for his back. Unless I've... See yeah. Alright, Cloud Post. Needle Port. We play Ballista plus Mom. Oh, wow, they just named Wasteland anyway, even though I don't have one. Oh, well, we're gonna, like, port them out of this game. That's the current plan.
Just gonna beat him up with mother of runes. Yep, sure, cloud posts. Is Strang's legacy playable? In <laughs> in cloud post it is, in 12th post. Wonder if I'm supposed to like take a turn off. It seems really risky, but so if they put Glimmer Post, they have one, two, three, four, five mana. Maybe I need to take a turn off to just like play a reasonable threat. Like just slam a brightling. What can they do on five mana? That's scary. If they play second Glimmer Post, they have exactly five, but they can't like Primeval Titan until they get to six. And then after I play Brightling, I can double port them. And it ups the clock significantly. They like crop rotation to another Cloud Post or something. And then tap for one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. But then they would only have colorless, so they can't like prime time me anyway. Yeah, I think I just have to like, play a threat. And then start double porting them. I think another needle. It's rough, but. So also probably supposed to leave a mom back if I'm gonna slam this bright line. Yeah, this is worst case. Like maximum mana here. Blist on one, port the green source. That's also another option, but I think I want, like, actual live threats in play. Ooh, they get to take my plow here. I'm not playing around Thought Knots here, but it's a card that kind of makes sense. Thanks for the good luck. Hello to you, Cafe Grut. I'm never going to be able to pronounce that name. Find another cloud post. That's horrible for me. List on one port the green sword. I don't think they're their green swords like don't matter a whole lot in this deck. Do I have the trade? I think I have to. I mean, I'll get to port. I like I have to port them once. They have another cloud post, so they'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. This thought I was just going like, brick wall me if I don't just trade with it and keep attacking with moms. Do you want me to play Paper Legacy? Yeah, good luck. Good luck, Arkin. Kill it. Am I playing Thalia here? Or am I, I think I'm porting here. I'm just going back on the Mother of Rune's beatdown plan, which is not good. For sure. So if we pump it to a 4-2, we trade the Thought Knot. We have Port or Thalia to play. Maybe let's play Thalia. There's so much mana. You like demolished. If they have another green source, I think I need a port, because if they have like more green, they can just play a Primeval Titan and then we're super dead. Obviously if they just take it, we can play Thalia and still port this cloud post. And then we're Okay. Yeah, we have to get plus one, minus one. And we might as well give it lifelink. Gain four life while we're here. Oh, I guess we didn't need to give it lifelink because we were going to draw a card and possibly we we're going to draw a land. And then we could have played Thalia here, but oops. Because the life gain does not matter. That was definitely a misplay. Life game doesn't matter. It's Cloud Post. They're going to beat me with like hardcast Ulamogs and Emrakuls. Because now we're priced into just putting down these Cloud Posts for the rest of the game. Oh no. Hey, at least I can play Thalia now. Let me get one of my mom's pro green. We got 
some burst damage here. Six mana deal three. Six mana lightning bolt. How's it going, XJ? Uh, it's going pretty good static. We're 2-2 two, two in this league, but having some interesting games for sure. Now we're playing against Cloudpost, which I'm a little horrified of, but comes the breaks. You need to prevent them from having 9 million mana. Good thing they Pithy Needle Wasteland and not Rashad Board. Or else we would be super dead. How'd humans go? Uh, we got we got run over pretty hard. We had like two pretty clunky sixes. Ooh. This is bad. Now they can use the ported cloud post to activate Eye of Ugin. One, two, three, four, five. So we can pro green mom attack with both. I don't think my opponent's deck plays like any removal, so. Stoneforge for Sword of Fire and Ice here. But it's mostly so we can put like Batterfall into play. So we port the Cloud Post and they float the mana. But then we go to their draw step. So they activate Eye is like the only thing they're doing this turn. And they can't really, they have to Eye for like small guys, right? Thought Not Seers and such. Reality Smashers maybe. But we can beat those with equipment. Another thought not sure. Yeah, he can't thought not both of my things. Opponent has enough mana to cast thought not already, so we'll just port the forest. They can cast thought not off of two mana plus the eye, but they can't take both the equipment. Oh, that's unfortunate. So I gain eight million life, and they can slowly start eyeing for bigger things. They take the batter skull, I imagine. Yep. Wisp. What does Wisp do? Not anything yet. If I draw a Wasteland, it could be relevant. I could like Wisp the Needle Wasteland stuff, but I think I'm just going to be putting in sort of Fire Nice, not attacking this turn. I do think we're just kind of dead. I think my opponent's just going like, to bury me. So my opponent doesn't want to use that Cloud Post to steal. Well, they'll use the second one, I guess that makes sense. Six seven, they'll have things like we get another thought mod or something. Yeah, we can maybe I should have gotten GTA. GTA is much better against thought mods here as with first strike. Put in the sword. I get to kill one thought now with the equipped Athalia attack. Oh, jeez, Vesuva. Oh, jeez, we're so dead. But okay, now just tutor for big things, because they have a uh, mana of the taps for or land of the taps for six mana. Or we could just triple port them now and keep crossing our fingers. We're just dead, though. We're so dead. Isn't that just wasting a mana if they do this? Because now I can just pour the other two cloud posts. Wait for my teammate to show up and leave for Detroit. Good luck. Oh, the opponent's just gonna like find more thought not here, <laughs> sure. Let's see you're back to cataclysm. Anyone get with chalices and cataclysm? Get anyone here with chalices and cataclysm? Yeah. No, I had boarded in chalice like once against Storm, I think that was it today. Cataclysm got my Grixis opponent good, though. And Cataclysm definitely won it for this matchup, for sure. 
I'm just gonna, like, thought not my Ballista, sure. Just start beating me up with 4-4s, four like. I'm gonna draw another mana. Uh, uh, now we can equip, at least. We can't even attack, realistically. But this prevents them from attacking. We can start attacking, bounce back with Caracas. But, realistically, I'm, like, trying to hold my head above water, and it's definitely not going to work. I don't think I can just stop activating the eye until I use the double port. They're just wasting a mana every turn. At least they can't thought on me anymore. Worldbreaker. Eh, that's pretty good. Can they cast it yet? I think so. Um, if I port this, they'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. So maybe they don't have another land drop. They break my worlds where I think we're good here. Okay, they need all oh, Rashad and Port. Alright, we're good here too. Like I'd rather have a light cast just separate over War and Peace, just give you another active tread of night, and another decent anti-Grixis card. Yeah, I was thinking about like I think War and Peace is the most easily cuttable card for my deck at this point. I was supposed to activate Stoneforge for this, but whatever. Time to get him. Aha, what are you going to do now, opponent? <laughs> Jump block with Elf Spirit Guide. Solid plan. Alright, let's see what truly fucked up things they can do with 900 mana. How much can they... Uh... What am I going to eye for? Like, l just literal Emrakul? Cool. They have 12, 13, 4, amp. Yeah, alright. Wait, I want to Karagas it first. Elvish, Elvish Rejuvenator, oh man. Some M19 tech. Because it hits any land, right? Yeah, so it's actually pretty sweet. You can find cloud posts and stuff. Glad we kept playing. That's a sweet card to see. Aha! Well, we gotta stay alive. We gotta block with everything. Now I'm just fucking around. We're super dead. I'll see if they cast more sweet cards like Elvish Rejuvenator. Wait, I want to bounce with Kura. Hey, just let me have fun, Static. Let me have a nice thing. My opponent gets to cast an Emrakul twice in the same game. And then, like, also tutor up an Ulamog or something. They get to have fun, too. Another Elvis Rejuvenator. The card actually does seem sick in this deck. Yeah, they should just find Cloud Posts. OP. They're gonna, like, find something sweet. Tutor up more stuff, opponent. They don't have to, and probably shouldn't, because it technically just reveals more information to me, but... Aw, oh, boring. I guess I'll concede. I don't want to go through the trouble of clicking on six permanents when Amrakul attacks, is the only reason I'm conceding. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd definitely let them attack me. I have more fun when my opponent doesn't do anything. Yeah, that's what we were trying to do, but opponent kept hitting land drops like a jerk. So, I think I just want these, I guess. Do I want Surgicals in this matchup? You know, like Wasteland, a Cloud Post, and Surgical, it seems pretty strong. What sucks in this matchup? I Source of Pleasures, I guess. No, the bonus on Quad Thought Not Seer, so Source of Pleasures isn't bad. Mother of Rune seems kind of shitty. We had two that game, and they did actual nothing. They were one man, they were Fugitive Wizards. Um, Sanctum Prelate can go on, like, 8 for Ugin, but, eh. These cards are for sure coming in. This Ballista also seems kind of shit. Brailing, yeah, Brailing seems not great. I think I'll bring in these Surgicals. This matchup's, like, kind of bad. You kind of need to, like, hedge on these, on these decent cards. <laughs> Surgical's not great, but sometimes you can just get them with Wasteland your Cloudpost Surgical it, and then 
try to win the game from that point. I guess Cheetahs might be more cuttable than, like, Prelate. Eh, no, they, again, they do have, um, like, four Thought Knot Seers, which is kind of obnoxious, and you want equipment to be able to punish through just four fours. You like Chalice here? I wasn't sure about it. I thought about it a little bit, but Chalice seems really clunky. It hits, like, their Expedition Map Crop Rotation Pithing Needle, but only on turn two plus. Maybe it's worth it. I definitely considered it briefly. I wonder if I'm supposed to keep this hand on the back of this Cataclysm. Meh. Prowl seems better than Surgical. Yeah, that's definitely an option. We also might just about be about, be about to get demolished because I kept a bad hand. Do I have enough points to play another League? I know I've been burning through them. Oh yeah, we're still good. Also, we just... No, we don't quite have enough ticks. But Cataclysm is very strong here. If we don't get it Thought Knotted, we might be able to just play it. Don't know goes to six. All right, we have a plan. Really wish this plan involved Aether Vial, though. Having Aether Vial down post Cataclysm is always really nice. Map. We'll play Tholly here, try to gum up their works a little bit. <laughs> Next turn, Stoneforge for Batter Skull or something. Well, that's obnoxious. So don't crack map yet. I get Council's Judgment if I draw land. Well, that was the actual worst possible. <laughs> we want to find lands, Jack. We have a Cataclysm in our hand. Cloudpost, crack map for Cloudpost. Thought not me. Ooh, Wasteland. Man, if only we had Surgical. Now I'm gonna waste it in the Caracas and play this Thalia. Man, if we had Surgical, this would be so good. They, like, search for a Cloudpost, we Wasteland it, and then Surgical it. Oh, boy. As it sits. I think Wasteland this is more important than trying to get to Cataclysm. So. Especially because I don't want to get, like, Thought Knotted quite yet. Aha. Uh -huh. Hmm. Am I supposed to surgical this now? They only have the one cloud post in play. I mean, they can put glimmer posts and utilize this pretty well, but... I think I'm just gonna be putting in a GTA and... Surgicaling this cloud post. A little turn too late. Surgical extraction. Would be really nice to have you last turn. Can't just hang out with your top hanger. It's just weird. Put this one over here. Make it less uncomfortable. Hit him for four. Surgical, their cloud post and their draw step. They also have Vesuva, so they can like make more cloud posts, but. Can yeah, kill this? Gross and grip, that's mean. Yeah, now our hand blows. Surgical your cloud posts. What is their hand and also their deck? Their deck seems pretty good. They're just gonna like thought not me right here. Still don't think we're gonna win. But we're gonna we're gonna try. I don't know, this is not what I want. Because I want their whole deck. I missed the graveyard over here. That's better. I'm gonna drag this to the side for now. Alright. The hand right now is Glimmer Post, Thought Knot, and Bringer Ugin Worldbreaker. 
So you get the Thought Not Me, but if they don't take the Cataclysm, then we can actually do stuff. Also, I can just plow the Thought Not in response, which I think I will. I just want to draw cards more than I want this GTA Online. If they hit lands, they can slam an Endbringer next turn, but we'll have Council's Judgment for that. We can also revoke Endbringer. We can also revoke Ugin. Their end is clunky if they don't find more lands. Yeah, they take the Cataclysm. They're super dead if they don't. Land number three means that the opponent is on one, two, three, four, five mana, so we can not do anything. I just have to like port them or play Jitae. I might just play Jitae just so I can actually get a fucking thread on the board. If they miss on a land, then we just start porting them after that, or like equip start porting them, but if they don't miss, we have Council Judgment for the Endbringer, we have a Phyrexia Invoker for the Ugin, we have nothing for this World Breaker. They like Ugin, I revoke it, and they World Break my Revoker, which is bad. For sure just attacking them here, though. Cast g -tape. pass. This just random main deck Caracas that they had is really not good, really good against my double Thalia. What's going on in their deck? Ulamog, Pithy Needles, Emrakul, a bunch of Endbringers. So there's just like Monogreen Eldrazi Post. With 4x Elvish Rejuvenator, 4 Ancient Stirrings, 3 Pithy Needles, notably, 2 Allah's Dust. I don't know how much I like Chalice. The Chalice looks like pretty embarrassing in this matchup. Especially on the draw, since they'll probably play out most of their ones by then. It prevents, like, uh, top deck Pithy Needle in the later turns, but... Or Ancient Stirrings or something. <sighs> I don't know what happened to my opponent. Oh, they lost connection. If they top deck another Glimmer Post, they'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mana, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana. So they could Endbringer me, and then that's bad because we don't have mana to Council's Judgment. I just died to this 5 7. But let's, they have to draw exactly Glimmer Post. Or Vesuva, I suppose. How many Vesuvas in their deck? Three? There are 11 posts, it looks like. Three Eye of Ugans, holy crap. That wouldn't always be bad for me. They can play World Breaker Endbringer off that. I'm actually horrified of a lot of the cards in my opponent's deck, <laughs> as it turns out. Would have really loved to uh, have circled that first cloud post. There we go, finally. Tech. Nope, not that. Just play this GTA and pass. Sweet, they ooh. They missed on lands, and we drew Crusader. Crusader plus GTA can definitely try to end this game in a hurry. Put them to 24, play this, attack for 5, put them to 19, and then Crusader pumps itself to a 6-6, six, six, hits for 6 and for 10. It's not like 3 turn lethal, but it's pretty close. I think it's more, more worth it than equipping here. Also, if we draw a land next turn, we can like equip GTA plus port them. Or just start boarding them if we don't draw the land, because we might just want to start boarding this cloud post before they can cast spells. Pitch Spirit Guide for Endbringer? Sure. Fuck! Now we have Council's Judgment this. Drawing Third Thalia, actual worst!
uh, Needle My GTA or the Rashadden port? That's like a legitimate question. Needle Rashadden port, alright, well. We have a plan now. I could pump there, but another oh, super yeah, they're super dead if they don't have like soul land into this endbringer or into their whatever it's called, their world breaker. Sick. Because we just have four counters, this thing actually just attacks for a million. Maybe I'm maybe I'm supposed to deal them an extra four there, put them to ten, have two counters, and it's still lethal. Yeah, I'm supposed to pump twice. I forgot like the double triggers were happening. All right, let's take a look at their deck. I did not actually expect to get to a game three. Oh god, what have I done? I need to shrink this window. There we go. All right, so their deck is three Croson grips, which they probably brought in. There's a walking ballista, which is horrifying. The only non-creatures they have are. Ancient Stirrings, Expedition Map, Croson Grip, Pithing Needle, and a one of um, Ugin. So Thalia, especially on the draw and with Karagas being in my opponent's deck, Thalia seems actually horrible. I think we're just going to cut all these Thalias. I even want to bring in War and Peace, just as another equipment that beats up my opponent. Um, I want the prelate back in. Oh, and all is uh, did I say all is dust the first time? I forget. But I think Thalia seems a lot less relevant than prelate because prelate can go in like seven or eight to be all is dust or Ugin. Um, what else do I want? Ballista, not really. Brightling, not really. They do notably have actual no interaction. I also don't think I want paths. Ramping them seems kind of. Rough. Plow seems much better. I think I want War and Peace just another way to try to like kill them really quickly. And maybe I do want Thalia just because it's like the best card here. Maybe I want a Ballista for Reach. Like late game. Maybe I want a Brightling. Because Brightling actually does things, but I think this is probably fine. Notably, we do know their entire deck now, at least. A lot of basic forests. Two basic wastes. I wonder why they have more than one basic waste, to be perfectly honest. Like the, I guess maybe like a critical mass of colorless sources for casting thought knots on time. They have four endbringers. Holy crap, that's terrifying. Alright, later, Arkin. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Hopefully we uh, we take our last game against eleven post over here. If we do like Wasteland Surgical, 